I want to share with you a question that I have received that I believe will be beneficial when I give the answer to many. Uh, there are others that may have uh, the same sort of question but just haven't spoke out yet. Before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a look at the question that is given. Hey, Brother Gabriel, I follow your videos on YouTube, and I find them a huge blessing. I have a question about sports and training martial arts. Is it okay for a Christian to train jiu-jitsu, to stay in shape, and learn self-defense, as long as you don't make it an idol? I like watching sports, and I love God more. I'm just trying to figure out the right way of going about it. Thank you, and God bless. This is a very good question. This may be upon the mind of others as well. So before I answer this question and get into it and give you my opinions, let's take a look at this short video clip. I want you to pay attention to the words that are being uh, spoken by this man towards a particular sport. And before we watch the video, I just want to say right off the bat that this is not a video to demean this man, to make fun of him, to mock him, to put a blot upon his life, or to judge him. Uh, that finality type of judgment is in the hands of God. Jesus Christ shall judge the quick and the dead. That is his business. But it is merely a, an example for us to take a look at and, and look at the wording that is used towards this particular sport. And I'll come back with my comments. Let's take a look at the video. Dear Basketball. From the moment I started rolling my dad's tube socks and shooting imaginary game-winning shots in the Great Western Forum, I knew one thing was real. I fell in love with you. A love so deep, I gave you my all. From my mind and body to my spirit and soul. As a six-year-old boy, deeply in love with you. I never saw the end of the tunnel. I only saw myself running out of one. And so I ran. I ran up and down every court after every loose ball for you. You asked for my hustle. I gave you my heart. Because it came with so much more. I played through the sweat and the hurt. Not because challenge called me. But because you called me. I did everything for you. Because that's what you do when someone makes you feel as alive as you've made me feel. You gave a six-year-old boy his Laker dream. And I'll always love you for it. Well, as you can see, this man was truly devoted, truly devoted to the game of basketball. It was shown through his wording, through his speech. His mind, his body, his soul and spirit was devoted to the basketball. He received life from the game or from the basketball. I'm just putting this out there for you to take a look at and notice the wording. The words that we speak are powerful. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The commandment of God is to love Him, love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. So when we use wording of adoration towards a particular sport or thing, form of exercise, then that is dangerous ground. Now, as I stated, this is not to determine this man's uh, eternal destiny. I do not know his life and if he was a born-again Christian or not. That's between him and God. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really follow along with his career. But our words can hold a lot of weight. And you spend five minutes with any person, five to ten minutes, and you can tell what's consuming their life, what's coming out of their mouth, what rules their heart, what they're interested in. 
So back to this question here. Is there anything wrong with playing sports or training the body and jujitsu or taking self-defense classes? Well, in and of themselves, I don't think there's anything wrong with it as long as the motive is not to do violence, is not to hurt. And most importantly, that these things are not done in a, in a way that consumes your time away from the will of God. And what do I mean by that? In this teaching that we're going to entitle, Are You Idolizing Sports? I want us to take a look at First John chapter 2. Notice, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That includes jujitsu, self-defense, watching sports, basketball, baseball, football, golf, tennis. Neither the things that are in the world. Notice, if any man love the world or the things that are in the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What does it mean to love something? Well, in this context, it means to give oneself to. To give oneself mind, body, soul, and spirit to. To be all consumed with such a thing. To where our speech says so. I mean, at times we may slip and say, oh, I love to play you know, football or, or, or tennis, or I'd love to go swimming, or I love to go exercise, love exercise, and I love jogging. I mean, that's one thing, but to be so wrapped up into it, to the point where you devote, you, 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 you speak on it in a way that puts it on a pedestal like it saved you, it saved your life, it gives you life, then that is dangerous ground. That we are not to love this world or the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And how can it be? How can the love of the Father be in someone who is consumed with the things of this world? You cannot fill a glass up with water and take another glass of, let's say, orange juice and fill up the glass of water with orange juice when there's a glass of water there. There's going to be a dilution. There's going to be a mixture. Something is not going to be pure. And likewise, in this, in this scripture, we see that God is saying that a man should not love the things that are in this world, be fully devoted with thing that, things in this world. If a man is, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So you got things in this world that are enticing your flesh, want to make you feel good, want to give you pleasure, want to appease your appetite, your, your, your fleshly appetites. That's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, covetousness, to, de to desire things, to not be content in the state that you're in for the period of time that you're in that state, but to always be lusting and craving for your neighbor's goods or for something better or more than you have. Or to be pulled in by the attraction of another being to the point of committing, one's, committing oneself uh, or giving oneself over to the lust of the flesh and committing in acts of indecency, of immorality or ingesting certain types of uh, substances that make one intoxicated. That's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life to achieve a certain type of status so you can be lauded by man and lifted up and looked at more highly than the next. There's a form of pride, and this comes in business and, and accumulating wealth and owning properties and uh, having a good name and climbing the corporate ladder or trying to attain a certain position. All, all these things are pr the, the form of pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. These are worldly things. These are the things that the nations or the heathen seek after. But the world passes the way, and the lust thereof. But notice, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. This will not fade away, doing the will of God. What is the will of God? Well, we've spoken about this in the past. Primarily, initially, firstly, the will of God is that none would perish, 
but that all would come to repentance. So doing the will of God initially is repenting of one's lifestyle of sin and waywardness from God. The Bible says at the times of ignorance, God winked at, but now he commands all men everywhere, every nation, every tribe, every part of this globe, all men to repent. Everyone has to repent of something. You say, well, I'm a good person. I don't need God. You need to repent of your being a good person and thinking you do not need God. Everyone has to repent of something because only those that do the will of God, not the things of this world, you're doing the will of basketball, of baseball, of jujitsu, of self-defense, of, of watching sports. You want to do what your trainer tells you to do. You want to get exercise and fit it up and get your body in shape. You want to look good and you want to be pleasing to others by looking good. You're consuming and you're devoting your, your life unto those things, things of the world, things that are lustful to the eyes and to the flesh and, and, and create pride in a person. These are things of the world. Is it wrong to get in shape? No. Is it wrong to exercise? Of course not. But bodily exercise profiteth little. Okay? But godliness with contentment is great gain, the Bible says. And notice in Isaiah 44, 20, he feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside. A deceived heart hath turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? Is there not a lie in my right hand? That which is in my right hand, the right hand is symbolic of power, of strength, of guidance, sustainability, right? In the right hand, he cannot say, is there not a lie here? Because his deceived heart has turned him aside to where he is now worshiping the creation, the things of this world, rather than the creator. He's living under delusion. He is thinking that that football, that baseball, that tennis racket gives him life, prospers him, makes him wake up makes him look forward to another day. He's given himself over to these objects and worship, worshiping them and putting them on a pedestal. He's feeding on ashes. Why are they ashes? Because these things are going to be consumed with fire. That is all that is going to be left of the racket ball, the tennis ball, the baseball, the basketball, the football. That's all that's going to be left of these material things are ashes he feedeth on ashes he feedeth on the idolatry he feedeth on that which can be corrupted and burnt to a crisp his face is in it he lifts up his face from his idolatry and he is consumed his face is marred with ashes is blackened by ash that is when you know that you are in idolatry and it can be for a sport or another person it can be for a woman Many men have fallen prey to the Jezebel spirit. They found themselves afterward that they have fed on ashes. What did Solomon say? Hear the whole conclusion of the matter at the end of Ecclesiastes. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And for me personally, I find doing the will of God of utmost importance beyond training jiu-jitsu or taking self-defense or watching sports. The will of God must be done. We must do the will of God in this life or else there will be an eternal penalty for not doing it. And while people are lifted up and they're remembered as being a great sports player or a great boxer or a great uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner and you know, just this great type of person. What about the will of God? Did that person do the will of God? Did that person go out and seek souls? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, try to win souls, convert souls, teach Bible studies, pray for people. Speak against wickedness. Rebuke the wickedness in this time that we're living in. 
fight for souls, do the work of an evangelist, get busy in the harvest field, be a laborer. Are they getting their hands dirty in doing the will of God? That is the question. It's not about how, how, how long I could spin a basketball on my finger. It's not about me being able to dunk from the free throw line or throw a 90-yard touchdown pass. Those things are amazing uh, for those who are in that field, and, and, and that's great in that respect, but that is not what's going to be counted on the Day of Judgment, those type of abilities. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith to me unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Praise the Lord. And I was just reading another passage, and I don't have it off the bat. I take too much time to look for it, but it's in John where Jesus is, is saying that, that if, if, if a man abides in me and does not bear fruit, the Father taketh him away, taketh him away. That's cut off. That's removed. But he that beareth fruit shall be purged so that he may bring forth more fruit. So there's only two roads for man. You either bear fruit in this life for the kingdom of God and you shall be pruned and purged to bear more fruit or you become stagnant and cease from bearing fruit or never bear fruit and you're going to be taken away or cut off by God. That's it, period. There's going to be a great separation of sheep and goats on the day of judgment. And this life is but a vapor. It's here one day and it's gone the next. We ought to know that we can be here one day and God can call us home the next. To those who are in the, in, in the will of God, to the righteous, he'll call home. Because there is no such thing as resting in peace for the wicked. The Bible says no peace for the wicked. Anguish and tribulation upon every soul that doeth evil to the Jew first and also also to the Greek Gentile non-Gentile Jewish non-Jewish everyone's going to have to give an account on the day of judgment for the deeds that they have produced in their body in this world so you can do your little jujitsu you can maneuver on the ground and play this bodily chess and you can you know go to the punching bag and go to the, these sparring matches and show that you're a good boxer you got a good right hook and and you can watch sports and you can know all the stats and you can be a very good uh, athletic person and you have like almost zero body fat. But I tell you, all those things are not going to be accounted on the day of judgment. What's going to be accounted is the person who feared God, departed from evil, and did the will of the Father. That's all that matters in this life, to live holy, to love God, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And in loving your neighbor, you will warn them of the idolatry that can happen of being a sports nut. One who is all consumed or consumed totally in the things of this world that are not of the Father, but of the world. Those things will fade away. Those things will be burnt. Those things are like ashes. But only the will of God will abide forever. I say these things in peace and in love and in warning to be about the Father's business before it's too late. Amen. Today, shortly before 10 o'clock at 9.47 a.m.